So you want to get a deal on a cheap CPU and uh, well you know CPUs can get quite expensive and well if you look on AliExpress or on Wish or on Alibaba you can get like ES CPUs or QS CPUs for a pretty good deal. And um, yeah why is that actually? That's what we want to talk about today because I think this is a very important topic that some people underestimate and um, some people might think that it is not really a big deal, although it kind of is. First of all, what are ES or QS CPUs? Well, most of the time those are engineering samples, um, which means that these CPUs are not meant for public use. So they say on the heat spreader most of the time, uh, Intel Confidential. So Intel Confidential and they say a uh, clock speed most of the time and then a number that is that coheres with the CPU name. And these CPUs are meant for, for example, reviewers for data center testing uh, sometimes, or they are just CPUs given out to uh, data centers or people to use them uh, for testing purposes, for example, or for review purposes, or also for internal, for example, in Intel internal data centers. Why am I specifically talking about Intel? Well, the thing with AMD is that there aren't that many engineering samples around. When you find QS or ES CPUs, those are mostly from Intel and they are, as I said, CPUs that have been given out to non-public uh, people. And I worked in that industry as well, so I was a hardware reviewer and therefore we had also quite a few engineering samples around. Although our engineering samples were pretty close to the finished state, so they had finalized clock speeds, finalized power consumption, finalized voltages, etc. But there are also different stages of engineering samples. So looking at the different stages of engineering samples, obviously there are very early stages, which might even have less cores than the finished product and a lot lower clock speed. This is most of the time just to test the architecture of that specific CPU. If it's, for example, a really new architecture on a new factory manufacturing process, that can be the case but those aren't really that common and aren't really sold by that many sellers on AliExpress or whatever. Then there is the engineering sample stage where you most of the time have a pretty much close to finished product, but uh, hasn't been uh, to the finalized specs yet. So it hasn't been validated at like, for example, if a CPU would be running at a final clock speed of like five gigahertz on all core boost, then maybe this CPU is running at only like four gigahertz or something. These clock speeds, these turbo clock speeds especially, can be quite a bit lower than on the finished product. And these engineering samples, these are mostly specified as ES chips. Those are pretty common and uh, they most of the time, as I said, they have the cor correct core amounts. They have limited uh, power saving modes. So sometimes some deep sleep or a deep power cycle or power state modes that uh, save energy can be disabled on them. So they maybe won't go into a, a deep idle state. Um, sometimes even the turbo is again way lower. The frequency can be a lot lower than on the finished product. So even though the number or the CPU might say the product number that it is, it's actually slower than the real thing. One cool thing about these engineering samples can be that some of them may have an unlock multiplier. So this was especially true in the past for some CPUs, not really anymore, but uh, it was kind of funny in the past, you were able to see a few engineering sample Xeons, for example, that even had an open multiplier and that you can uh, could overclock without any issues. That was kind of cool, but isn't really the case anymore. Then there is the final stage, which is the QS sample. QS is basically a quality control sample or that is basically the final form before it goes into retail. So those chips basically have the final specs. They have everything a retail chip also has. So in theory, you could say if you find a QS chip for a good deal, well, that might be actually worth buying it. 
Well, there's a catch. Because these chips are not supposed to be sold officially. That's why they say uh, interconfidential on the heat spreader most of the time because they aren't really supposed to be sold and have to be given back to the manufacturer, therefore Intel normally, and they are not supposed to be sold onward. And if Intel finds out that, for example, you have a CPU, you have a engineering sample CPU, they can tell you to send it back to them and you pretty much have to do it because they still kind of own the product. While obviously, yeah, this doesn't really happen that often, pretty much never, I guess, or I haven't really heard of it that much, especially on like AliExpress listings or whatever. Um, obviously, when we as a reviewer had uh, in engineering sample chips, then Intel would often ask back for them. So ask us to send them back, for example, to other reviewers or just send them back because well, they needed them back or they were just lent to us for a specific period of time, which can happen with some really high-end chips. For example, back in the day, the 2000 uh, euro 18 core CPUs, those were only like lent to us for maybe a few months for testing and for benchmarking purposes. And then we had to send them back um, when we were finished with them or when Intel told us to. And uh, yeah, that's basically what you would have to do. Well, because they could open up a lawsuit against you if you didn't. So that could be pretty costly if, uh, yeah. Well, of course, maybe there are some loopholes I am not aware of. This could obviously be possible. But as far as I know, you have to ob obey the manufacturer in that case, because those are just the products that belong to the manufacturer. And this is the reason why you maybe shouldn't really buy engineering sample CPUs. Well, yes, there are quite a lot of good deals, especially in the Xeon market. And for example, Linus Tech Tips has done quite a few videos about this, where he bought a lot of server CPUs that were, well, maybe a tenth of the price, which is amazing for the power you can get. But again, as I said, they can have some problems and in his videos, if you have watched them, he bought some early engineering sample CPUs, for example, and he had a, a lot of trouble with them. They did sometimes didn't even start or only had compatibility with some motherboards, which is also a possibility. So yeah, you might not want to do that, as I said, and it's maybe not such a good idea. One thing that's also kind of interesting and I want to add is that sometimes there are mobile chips on offer on AliExpress or somewhere else like Wish.com even or Temu or whatever. And those CPUs are genuine CPUs. They are just using kind of an adapter for desktop sockets to put on a mobile CPU. And that actually works. Although you gotta be careful because mobile CPUs often boost quite a bit lower, obviously because they have a lower TDP and not a lot of motherboards actually support that and they will tell you that there is something wrong or not every feature will be enabled. Uh, Linus Tech Tips also has done a video on this topic and yeah, well, it may not be the best to buy also. I hope this info could clear up some things about these engineering sample chips because I think a lot of people don't really know what's all of that about and um, yeah, if you have any other questions, if you want to add to this topic, for example, because that could be important to some other people, uh, just leave it in the comments down below. Otherwise, if you want to see more videos like these, subscribe to the channel and leave a like and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.